praise his name together. Hymn number 33 in your hymnals. Hymn number 33 in your hymnals. one more time and this is global 
This is a place where we know that the Holy Spirit reigns. A lady called me this week for prayer. She came here once and she said, you know, I came to your church once and, and I just felt the presence of the Holy Spirit there. I saw that I missed about four calls from her and I called her back because I didn't even know who I was calling. But I called her and she started to tell me and she said, you know, that church is a very special church. It's a very special church. The Spirit of God resting there. And I said, yes, we glorify God. Hallelujah. So this morning, as we have come together like this, we pray for those who are on their way that God will bring them safe those who are on home and those who are watching us uh, via the internet today we pray for them and we welcome them also and we know that we're going to have a good time in the Lord today so let us greet each other now in the bond of love
name this morning. Lord, we give you all honor and glory. Hallelujah. And let us hail our King, our soon coming. testimonies. Amen? Let us give him praise for the goodness that he has given, the goodness that he brings. Hallelujah. Who will be able to testify of God's goodness? Testify, saints, for God is Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother 
Testify, saints. Hallelujah. Go ahead, brother. <clears throat>
be glorified. You and I, yes. that's the reason why we pray. We have to pray to one the mark. Yes, sir. The word of God says we have to pray to one the mark. And the high calling. Hallelujah. And the low calling. <laughs> we will lower the connected down there one time. But no, we are highly connected. Glory to God. We are just people and we go meet him. Praise the Lord. Any other praise reports? Hallelujah. If there aren't any other testimonies, Mr. Keyshawn, as we go forward, amen, and close out our praise and worship as we look on to Jesus, who is beautiful beyond description, to marvelous for words. Glory to God.
as we give him all honor and praise. As we glorify his name. Lord, let's just lift him up in your heart. the ships of Tarshish with an east wind. <coughs> we have thought of thy loving kindness, O God, in the midst of thy temple.
true God, thy refuge and underneath the everlasting arms. Yeah. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. As we go here now into prayer, lean upon his everlasting arms. Amen. God, our Father, and our Sovereign Lord, Lord, we seek out you this morning. And Lord, I pray that you hear the prayers of your righteous people. Lord, we lift up unto you the ministers of Jen and their family, the political leaders and troops throughout the world. Lord, we pray for all pastors in the church universe, for the safety of children and young people this school year, and for your peace to fall on Jerusalem, the peace of Jerusalem. God, our Father, we pray unto you for our Reverend Clark, and family, Lord. Lord, for Pat Clark, for the Coakley family, for Margaret Towner, for the Bell family, for the Estreplet family, for the Malcolm family. Lord, forget not Sister Green and her entire family, for Brother Lisburn Williams and family, for the Wright family. Lord, forget not Janseth Malcolm, Lord, who's recovering from a stroke. And Lord, may you just Bless all those who are here to represent their family. Lord, may your goodness go throughout and between each and every pew and touch each and every heart. And Lord, that we may live in your blessings and rejoice. Lord, we thank you for the wonderful riches and the abundance of your goodness that you shower on us. Lord, we thank you because we don't deserve it, but you, a loving God, and a love for your church, hear the prayers of your righteous. Lord, hear us now. Lord, tend to our needs. Lord, guide us according to your will, that we may only look onto your presence, that we may not look from side to side, but always seek your face for each and everything, that we would come to you with supplications, with thanksgiving for your goodness. Lord, we rejoice that you are the everlasting God, that you bring your change and your character into our lives. Bless us now, Lord, in all our supplications. Bless us now, Lord, in all our requests. Bless us now, Lord, and remove all sickness and pain. Bless us now, Lord, and remove all anxiety and doubt. Lord, bring us through and bring us up, Lord, in your goodness and all your blessings. Lord, we thank you for all that you do and all that you continue to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The announcements. Please turn with me. Let me make this the first announcement. Right here in the, the middle of your bulletin that you see, this coming Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, February the 10th is Ash Wednesday, and our service starts at 7 p.m. Amen. Please come out. Please bring family and friends. Tell your neighbor that they would come out and get the blessing of God at our Ash Wednesday service. Amen. Mark your calendars. Please spread the word. Spread the word. April 16th at 9 a.m. we have our annual prayer break. And the theme for our prayer breakfast this year, pray your way through, pray your way through. Tickets will be available this coming, next Sunday, excuse me, next Sunday. And please assist in any way you can to make this event a great success. Amen. Thank you. Our annual bus trip to Sight and Sound will be Saturday, May 21st. Please speak to Deacon, Deaconess Joyce Duncan. And the cost for adults is $150. For children, under 12, $100. The cost includes transportation, lunch, and a show. And after dinner, we'll go shopping at one of the outlets. We are asking everyone to assist with this effort to raise funds. This is a fundraiser for the church. Amen. We are asking the women and men to join hearts and minds together and let us evangelize the community. Let us come together 
in this very important effort to reach and win souls for the kingdom. Here in this very community, uh, we meet for John 3.16, the first Saturday of the month and the third. So you have another Saturday coming up. Please come out. We usually start between 11.30 and 12 or so. Uh, with the weather that it's, it's still winter, probably around 12 noon to get people out and have them moving around. So please come out. Uh, you have any questions or any further details, need any further details, you can see me about our outreach effort. Amen. Uh, one reminder, please remember today's service can be accessed by going to our website, globalevangelisticministries.org, .org, and clicking on the shortcut, click here to go to service archive. Amen. And the announcements on the back of your bulletin. Sick and shut in, please continue to pray for Sister Evelyn Green and family. Uh, I know she wanted to come to church this morning, and this morning she wasn't feeling too well. Uh, maybe she'll still arrive. I know she really wanted to come. Please keep her in prayer, her and her family. General announcements and concerns, no food or drink permitted in the sanctuary. Clarence, please take your children downstairs to our fellowship hall if they need to eat or use the bathroom. Um, the bathroom here on this floor is not working properly. Please use the one downstairs in our fellowship hall. Uh, thank you. All announcements must be called in or sent to the church office by Wednesday. And please contact Deaconess Joyce Duncan to donate all the flowers or to place flowers here for family, friends, of loved ones. And once again, let's be meditative here in the sanctuary. Please try not to move around as less as possible. And let us be mindful when there is a reading of scripture and the delivery of the message. And let us be prayerfully, prayerfully attentive. Amen? Praise the Lord. Sunday morning prayer meeting as follows in our weekly schedule is at 9.30 a.m. Sunday school directly following at 10 a.m. Sunday worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. service. Bible study Wednesday at 6 p.m. Chancel choir rehearsal. Thursdays at 5 p.m. Youth rehearsals are Saturday at 3 p.m. Please come out all youth. Prayer meeting, prayer meetings Friday at 7 p.m. <laughs> Gems women ministry meetings are the third Sunday following the service, 11 a.m. service. And Gems men ministry meetings are the third Saturdays at 2 p.m. Amen. Once again, we just like to welcome everyone who came out. Good to see all your faces that you're here and attentive to the word and looking to be filled. And tell a friend about Global to come out. You know, if they can't come out, they can watch online the service live. And we thank God for the opportunity each and every Sunday and that the blessings will go out from pew to pew. Again, welcome again to Global Evangelistic Commission. Amen. Our scripture reading for the New Testament will come from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 down to 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and verses 1 down to 13. And when you have it, please stand for the reading of God's word. First Corinthians chapter 13, and I'll be reading verses 1 down to 13. Amen? Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I, be, I am become as sounding brass or a twinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge 
and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am not. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me not. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemingly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. Amen. And you may be seated. May God send a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, and the doing of God's holy word. Amen. At this time, let us worship God by bringing home his tithes and his offering. The offertory selection, number 161 in your hand.
Lord, we thank you for providing a way that we may give back unto you. Lord, send your blessings now. Lord, bless all those who gave and all those who want to give. Lord, guide us according to all your goodness. Lord, that we may be obedient to your will and your way. And Lord, that you may shower your blessings on all. Lord, let us rejoice and go with your gift of counsel and do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. time we have a presentation. Amen. Um, Brianna Bell. in black history. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our sermonic hymn in our hymnals, number 348, My Savior's Love. When you have it, I'm going to ask you again, please stand for directly following will be the word by Reverend Ray Clark. Number 348 in your hymnals.
wonderful is our Savior's love for us today. There's nothing that can surpass such love. And today we just give God the glory. Lord, we thank you for bringing us to this place where we must now sit at your feet and listen to the Holy Spirit as he speaks to our hearts. We pray, O oh God, that your word today will make an imprint upon our heart, that it will become indelible on our minds, that nothing throughout this week will separate us from your word, because you spoke directly to us individually. Bless your word now to our hearts, we pray. As we wait upon you, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. You may be seated. The journey that leads to wholeness. Today we look at the title, The Consequences of Selfishness. The consequences of selfishness or selfishness and its consequences. Turn with me in your Bibles, if you will, to Luke chapter 15. <coughs> Luke chapter 15, and I'm going to read verses 13 and 14. Luke chapter 15, verses 13. And 14. When you're there, say amen. amen. Pages are still turned. Luke 15, 13, and 14. And then we will also read Colossians chapter 3, verse 70. Colossians chapter 3, verse 70. So Luke chapter 15, 13 through 14, and we we'll also read Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. So if you've found both of them, then let me hear you say a strong amen. 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 And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together. And he took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, <coughs> there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in war. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17 says, And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him, Christ Jesus. We live in a world where everybody wants to have everything. <coughs> That's why the credit card debts are so high. That's why the bank has to write off debts every year in billions of dollars because people live above their means. And they are selfish about it. Selfishness really means to be excessive, extraordinarily excessive when it comes to yourself. It means to focus on yourself and yourself alone.
And that is a sin that we do not pay attention to in the Bible. Selfishness is sin. The word sin really means to miss the mark. For most of you who have never been using bow and arrow or guns or anything that demands a target, when you look at the Target Store logo, it really has a target with a big red in the middle and a small red line circling it <coughs> on the outside. Whenever you go target practice, you'd see a similar target. And there's a big red in the middle where you would shoot at whatever you shoot. And then there is though there are those lines on the outside. If you miss the one in the middle, you have missed the target, even if you hit the board. Even if you hit the board on the lines on the outside of that central block that's in the middle, you miss the target. God has set a standard for us to live by as people and as he has made us. And whenever we stray and whenever we go aside from that standard, which God has set up for us, we miss the time. We miss the time. Man, when he fell in the Garden of Eden because of disobedience to God, missed the target. God gave us everything. Oh, such a wonderful place. It is known as paradise, Eden. But man messed it up. Why? Because of selfishness. <coughs> selfishness is sin. So lust is when you desire whatever is forbidden. Do you know that people go out of their way to acquire the forbidden? <clears throat> busloads and busloads leave New York every day to Atlantic City. forbidden. People steal from their jobs because they want to acquire what is forbidden.
greed, and the other is gratification. One is greed, and the other is gratification. You see, whatever you go after, you go after it for the end result. You know that none of us likes to sit. to somebody today. Yeah. Talking to somebody today. Now that feeling is the selfishness that exists in your heart. Let me tell you something. Some common things around you are attributes of selfishness that we're going to go into. Generosity are is an attribute of selfishness. Compassion can be an attribute of selfishness. Do you know that? When you think of Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, If you push that wheelchair because it makes you feel good, it is selfishness. It's a self. Or to do his work, you're going there because at the end of the day, it makes you feel good. <laughs> You get me? Are you with me? Yes. Amen? So selfishness is sin. Selfishness is sin. James chapter 1 says, Lust, when it is conceived, bring it forth sin. For conception to take place, Two things must come together, male and a female. Myra? Right. So lust is to desire what is forbidden. So what comes to desire to bring sin? When you submit your will, your will to desire, they become a couple. They procreate and they bring forth a to your desire. I talked about being self-willed recently. Because some of us, we don't want to pray for God's will. You see, when you have your rent to pay and you're going for a job interview, you're not going to have I need this money. God is saying, who is God? <laughs> You are me. God, make my will your will. You ever hear people pray, turn it around, Lord, turn it around. To turn things around so that their will will become God's will instead of God's will becoming their will. 
Relationships, the same thing happens. When we fall in love, we don't want God's will. Oh, she is beautiful. He's tall, handsome, and dark. Ain't nobody like that in the world. So we don't pray for God's will now. Oh, he's got a good job. He's a great prospect. He's brilliant. She's brilliant. Great prospect. Great prospect. And we don't talk about them by their name. We call them by their profession. Amen? I met a teacher the other day. No name. I met a doctor the other day. No name. We call them by their profession because we are in this relationship not because of the reason we should be in it, but we are in it for the euphoric reason, the end result. Selfishness. No woman in Jamaica, she would come by my restaurant and she would eat and, and she was a talker. She, her husband was the sickest, second biggest man in Bank of Jamaica and she would come, she would drive her car and she would get there and she would, she would have lunch and, and we became quite acquainted and she, she and her husband had a big house, huge house. They had no children. And one day she was talking so badly about her husband because she doesn't have to work. She drives a car that is issued by the bank. It is gassed by the bank. It is serviced by the bank. Because her husband is the second, big, second biggest guy in Bank of Jamaica. <coughs> she can drive around in diamonds every day, looking splendid every day. She goes to the gym. She comes back. She, she usually comes to lunch after the gym and she would eat uh, nice dietary meals and, and she's that kind of person. And one day I heard her talking so badly about her husband and I said, why did you marry that man? Why did you marry that man? She said, because he had prospects. I saw him going places in the bank. One day she was complaining about him and I sat there and I said to her, I said, I'm going to tell you one thing. Mark my word here today. It's either you kill that guy or he kills you. So you need to adopt. You have a big house. Maybe you need something or somebody to occupy your time. Go out there, adopt two or three children, and scatter them and chase them around that big house. She said, me, you want me to go and adopt people but broke children? <laughs> I said, you, the devil finds work for idle hands. And after I came here, a couple months after, my friend called me from Jamaica, and he said, guess what? She killed her husband. She chopped him 25 times in his head. I remember Brian saying to me, don't say anything about me. They were there when I told I said, I'm listening to you, and it's either you kill that man, or he's going to kill me.
She came. She's serving life now in Jamaica. Let me tell you something. Selfishness is a dangerous, dangerous sin that we overlook. And if you want to find selfish people, come to church. Come to church. Selfishness is dangerous. The selfish person has no real compassion. The selfish person has no real sympathy. The selfish person has no real kindness. No kindness in their heart for anyone else. They do only what makes them feel good. And so all the attributes, all the great things you do, when you have done it for the wrong reason, it works out for nothing. It is called vain work. You have no reward for it. Jesus says to his disciples, if anyone gives you a cup of water in my name, glory to God, not for the good feeling that they gave a disciple a cup of water, but if they give it to you in my name, for my glory, they shall not lose their reward. In my name, that's the condition for the reward. It must be given in the name of the Lord. not about you or me. Hallelujah. It's never about you or me. Guess why? We are only servants of God. Whatever we put our hands to, we must do it in the name of Jesus. You see, an ambassador does not represent himself or herself abroad. An ambassador represents his or her country. Christians are ambassadors of God. We are of a different sort. We are of a heavenly kingdom. We are sojourners on earth only to represent God Almighty. Therefore, everything that we do, we must do it in the name of the Lord. You don't have to be anybody's hero, you know. Because <laughs> I'm a truth, you're doing exactly what you're supposed to. You don't have to be anybody's hero. When you can acknowledge that I give God all the glory. I remember one Sunday I preached in a church and I was shaking hands at the door and then a gentleman came there. He had his doctorate and he is a professional speaker. And he shook my hand and he said, great message, Pastor. I said, give God the glory. He says, you can stay there talking about give God the glory. I heard you speak. <laughs> I said, I hope you didn't hear me. I hope you heard the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart.
because when I set up at night, I'm not listening to me. I'm listening to God. You know, I typed the whole introduction. It's the first in a long time. <coughs> I ever pushed my computer over to my wife and I say, read this. And she read it because she was sitting there while I was typing away. And I said, just read this. And she, she read it and she meditated on it and she said, wow, it's good. I sat back before the computer last night. We were sitting there again. And I, I booted up the computer. Guess what? I didn't save it. <coughs> it was all gone. All gone. And I looked at the computer and I gazed at it. And I just grabbed my notebook and I started to look over my notes. And I, I pushed the computer away and then I just put down the Bible and I went to my bed. Yeah. Selfishness is not a good thing. We are to search our hearts why we do things the things we do. Why we give the way we give. Why do we do the things we do? Are we doing it for Jesus? Or are we doing it for ourselves? Why did you send that parcel to Jamaica? <laughs> Trinidad, wherever you send it. Is it because you want your relatives to love you more than everybody else? And that's a bad reason. But if you pray over that barrel before you send it and say, Lord, I'm sending this in your name and I want it to bless somebody. I want when they take out this shirt, this pants, this flower, this, this, this bully beef, whatever you put in it, I've never sent a barrel. Well, I listened to a, a video of a guy in Jamaica who was telling people what not to send in their barrels. <laughs> <laughs> he said, don't send any candle soup and all of that stuff. <laughs> but put a nice sneaker in the bottom and cover it up, all of that stuff. But whatever you put in that barrel, you pray over it that it will bless somebody. Actually, it's not true that I never sent a barrel. I've sent one barrel. I sent a barrel to some homeless thing in St. Vincent not so long ago. Lots of stuff. And then they wrote me and they said, man, the church wrote me and said, the people were so happy as they lined up and they came and they got their toothbrush, their toothpaste, simple things. But we prayed over that before we shipped it. Glory to God that it would bless somebody's heart. When we hand out coffee here, we pray before we give a cup of coffee because we're not giving it out for us to look good. We're not giving it out for some politicians to pass by and use us as a token. We're giving it out in the name of Jesus. Amen. And it might bless somebody. You know, as they drink that cup of coffee, the Lord ministering to them. Oh, glory to God. They don't even know that the Lord is ministering to them. Every sip, every mouthful, every swallow, the Lord is ministering to them, ministering to their hearts. And that's what we want when you give a cup of water in the name of Jesus. I remember a prophet in a great famine came to a lady's house after he had been fed by crows in a cave. God sent him to a widow's house. And when he went there to that widow's house, she had given up on life. She was going to die the next day. She was cooking the last meal for her and her son. And as he turned up, Amen. Elijah took his composure and he said to her, give me something to eat. She said, sir, what are you talking about? You see these two sticks that I just went and got? 
I got it to cook my last meal for my son and I. And the prophet said, I'm going to teach you not to be selfish. And I'm going to show you a blessing because you become selfless. Before you make your son's dinner, your dinner, make me a dumpling. Glory to God. Glory to God. The little bit of meal could only make enough for her and her son. The oil that she was going to cook it with, she only had enough to cook that one meal. After she obeyed the prophet and she became unselfish, she supplied the whole neighborhood with oil. Hallelujah. She had no, she never had enough vessel for God to pour oil in. When you become unselfish, when you give without remembering that you have given, when you take that out of your wallet, out of your pocket, because I know you're not doing any farming in America. When you have taken out the last dime and you say, God, this can't buy me anything of substance, but I know you can use it because you can multiply it. Glory to God. It's amazing when you go home what you find. <coughs> Always tell the story. I went to a meeting in Mandible one night, heard about this guy called B.T. Williams. Just came from America, a new kind of evangelism. People were getting healed and all sorts of things were happening. And we went to one of B.T. Williams' meetings. And he was there, and a big crowd gathered under the tent. He had about 15 people with baskets collecting offering. And I had $5 in my pocket. At that time, Jamaican $5 was $5. I had $5 in my pocket. And the, the basket passed me. And I'm, I have to go to work that week. I have to buy gas. I, 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 and the basket passed me about three times. And I said, God, why you keep sending the basket past me? I only have five dollars in my pocket. Why they don't go somewhere else? Why every time I look around, there's a basket? And let me tell you something. The next pass, the basket name, I squeeze the five dollars. I said, God, you must know why this basket is coming around. And I took it out and I said, God, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> and I dropped it in the basket. We left there, and about five, about a quarter mile from that tent, there was a beautiful sister in the Lord, Sister Sybil Gibson. She was sitting in the back of that Volkswagen minibus, and she stretched over the shoulder in front of her, and she says, Brother Ray, here the Lord says I'm to give you this. And I squeeze it down, and I look, it was 20 put it in my pocket. If I had a safety pin, I would have pinned it down. I didn't tell her till a week after what the Lord told her to do and how obedient she was. <laughs> you got to do it in the name of the Lord. causes separation. Selfishness causes separation. When you are selfish, it divides you from people. People don't want you around when you're selfish. They don't want to share with you when you are selfish. 
They don't want to be around you when you are selfish. It separates you from God and it separates you from your fellow man. The reason you don't give the way you ought to give in church, it's not just your lack, it's because you are selfish. Because if you look at what you have done, and if you evaluate it carefully, you will know you have not done your best. All right. You will know. It doesn't matter. When you live in disobedience, you are selfish. That was what happened to Adam and Eve. They disobeyed God to fulfill a selfish desire. the garden, straight out of his presence, and guarded the garden that they could never go back to access the tree of life. All that happened after that was murder. Murder, and murder, and murder. Cain killing his brother forbidding the fact that his brother's sacrifice was acceptable and his was not. Murder. That's lust. Lust is covetousness. <coughs> How do we overcome selfishness? Turn with me to First John. First John chapter 4. I give you the bad news, now I'm going to give you the good news. We are at first John. First John, not St. John. One John. Chapter 4. First John chapter 4. First John chapter 4. It will take me a week to preach this message, yeah. but I'm trying to get there. First John chapter 4, and I'm going to read verses 7. I'm going to read from verse 6 to 8. When you're there, say amen. amen. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not, what? Knoweth not God. Why? Because God is love. And the word love there is transliterated agape. And the Greek word agape means benevolence. So what does the scripture say? God is benevolence. Not that God is benevolent. The verb. But God is Benevolence. Say that with me. God is benevolence. Benevolence means that you are a kind, giving, and forgiving person. That's benevolence. You give unconditionally. That's benevolence. I don't have to earn what you have to give. But you think that a need exists in my life and you give it unconditionally. That's benevolence. That is God. 
And that is the love of God. So what great selfishness in our life? The love of God. How can you say you know God when you have no benevolence in your life? How can you say you know God when you are not benevolent? Because God is benevolence. And that's why Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that if you speak with tongues more than angels and you have not benevolence, charity, you are just a sounding symbol and a noisy gong. If you don't have benevolence, all your pious singing and everything else is nothing. Amen. Benevolence. God is benevolence. Look at Colossians chapter 3 with me one more time. Colossians chapter 3. Verse 12, when you there say amen, it says, put on therefore the elect of God, as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercy. Here's a list of benevolence. Glory to God. Put on bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, do what? Put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Because charity is what holds all of those good works together. Benevolence is what holds all of those good works together. So you're going to put, you're going to put a, 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 a bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another, and, 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 and you're going to, you're going to make peace with those with whom you had a quarrel or a dispute. And you're going to put that in a package. And when you package it, you're going to label it charity. Charity is holding it together. That band that you put around it is called charity. That is the strength of all these things above. Charity, love, the love of God, the benevolence that can only come from God. So when you're squeezing and you're giving reluctantly, remember that your worship is not judged by how much you give, but by how much you hold back. You don't hear it. Your worship is not measured by how much you give, but by how much you hold back. Ananias and Sapphira were selfish. The church had come together in Acts chapter 4. The whole body of Christ in the New Testament church came together and everybody got saved. But some were poor and some were rich. Some had more than the other. And they called a meeting. And they said, here is what we're going to do to strengthen our faith and to show the world that we are different. They said, we're going to sell everything we have and we're going to divide the money equally. We're going to bring all the money to Peter. We're going to put it at his feet. 
and they're going to check up all of that money. They're going to count up how many people are here after they have checked up all the money, and they are going to do what is called equitable distribution. All men having everything equal. That's where communism get their theolo theology from. <laughs> In Acts chapter 5. And all of them vowed to do that. Last week I was telling my daughter, don't vow anything, vow to God if you're not going to keep it. Because God is not asking that of you. It's better you never vow than to vow and not keep. For the money you put in the envelope, if when you do the math, it's not 10% of what you earn as a gross, because you're lying to the Holy Spirit. Don't put it in the tithe column. If it is less than 10% of your gross, put it in the free will offering, you might be better off. Because it becomes proportionate according to the grace you think God has bestowed upon you. One life I'm getting to. <coughs> Ananias and Sapphira came in and they presented their money. Ananias came in first before his wife, but they had a meeting at home. And Ananias said, man, look how much money we have here. It's unreasonable. The Peter is asking too much of us. We can't give all of this. Then what are we going to do? He meant to give us back some. This is our money. So he went and he presented it at Peter's feet. And, and the Holy Spirit spoke through Peter. And the Holy Spirit asked Ananias. It wasn't Peter asking. It was the Holy Spirit because Peter did not accuse them of lying to him. He accused them of lying to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit through Peter asked Ananias, is that the full sum? He said, yes. He said, stand up, man. Are you sure that is the full sum? Yes. Peter said, man, why do you lie to the Holy Spirit? Ananias fell dead right at Peter's feet. That's a consequence of selfishness. He fell dead at Peter's feet. His wife walked in, all dolled up and everything. She does that money, so she bought a new hat. Yeah. Went shopping and she came back and all down. <laughs> Peter said, Come here, come here, Mrs. Come here, Papa. Look, your husband came a while ago. She didn't tell her that your husband was dead yet. And she didn't see the body. The husband came in here a while ago and this was the money he put down here. Is this all the money? She said yes. <laughs> she said yes. Peter said, we ain't going no further with this. The same six men who took your, fuck your husband out is going to take you out right now. She fell dead right there. Because selfishness is sin. The wages of sin is death. When lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. And when sin is finished with you, it kills you. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I am come that you might have life 
and have it more abundantly. The prophet says, I have placed before you life and death. Choose life. Glory to God. Choose life. <coughs> Choose life over selfishness. Choose life over this world's goods. Because I tell people all the while, I've seen it time and time again as people save up all their money as they never gave, as they never gave as they should, as they think they have done more than they should. Guess what? They die and they leave it and their unsaved children finish it in a month. Finish it, blow it. Easy come, easy go. my mother's funeral. They never talk about that at my daddy's funeral. At my mother's funeral, I sat there and as the lady, my parents weren't rich people. I'm telling you this right now. I know what it is to beg salt. I know what it is to borrow sugar. I know what it is to buy quatty butter. You hear me now? Last yesterday I was listening to the radio and they called a man on halfway three on Bridges Road, half a bulla. And the host for the radio show was saying half a bulla. He said, yes man, he sells half a bulla. I remember when I had to buy half a bulla for my lunch. My parents weren't rich. But as that lady read the eulogy for my mother, and she read the list of everything they have done for the church, I was at awe. I almost couldn't preach. I said, what? They did that and that and that. And they gave all of that. They tiled the floor. They built pews. They built a pulpit. My parents, where did they get the money from? But today, they must have written my name in the memo bar. Because truly God has blessed me. In spite of everything, I say, thank you, God. Because when I look at my life, I never anticipate having a wife, two children, a wonderful family. <laughs> I never saw that in my wildest dream, being born in that little district, running around in the red dirt every day, going to school barefoot. Never dreamt of it. But thanks be to God, I had parents who were not sad. Oh man, they used to, that used to load me up with some young. Didn't know my wife much at that time, but he used to load me up and send me to her aunt's house. And, and, and I used to hate that thing. He <laughs> would load you up and send you with the best of what he has to give to people. He never gave away anything he didn't. He never gave it away because he didn't want it. But if he's going to give you something, he's going to give you the very best. <coughs> My friends, we must repent of being selfish. Because you have been holding your salvation to yourself. You're walking in disobedience to God when you don't witness to somebody about Jesus. How can you keep such a good thing quiet? How can you keep such a good thing quiet? No silver, nor gold, no lottery winning can give you what you have in Jesus Christ. How can you keep it so quiet? You ought to shout it out. 
the preacher at the funeral not so long ago, and when I was through with the funeral, a gentleman came to me and said, Pastor, which radio station you on? Which television channel do I watch you on? I said, luckily I could tell him, go on the internet, www.globalevangelisticministries.org. He says, no, you need to preach this message on a radio and television so someone can hear it. I tell people all the time, I say, whenever I ask you to tithe, I'm not asking you because I think the church needs the money or I need the money. It's not that I don't need money. I need money every day. But it's for your own good. It's for your own blessing. It's for your own blessing. If you can come to this church and make a room to sweep somewhere, it's for your own blessing. If you can come and wipe that glass out there one day, it's for your own blessing. It's not for show. When I come here at work, I don't work for show. Brother Wright can tell you I work hard. When I walk in here, I don't leave things undone and wait for Brother Wright to come and say, okay, he's going to take care of that. No, I see the bathroom need cleaning. I go straight ahead and I clean that bathroom. I don't leave it dirty. I came here this morning in my suit and I went and worked on that bathroom. You've got to know which God you're serving. Selfishness is sin. We've got to uncover that in our lives. We've got to get rid of it. Because selfishness separates you from God. Selfishness separates you from the blessing you should receive. You wonder how you didn't receive that blessing? Search your life. You've been separated. We're going to look more into separation when we come back in this study. And see how terrible separation can be. But Matthew chapter 25, verse 43 says, and I'm closing. Depart from me, ye curse. I know you not. For I was hungry, and you didn't eat. I was thirsty, and you didn't give me to drink. I was sick, and you didn't come to visit me. I was in prison, and you didn't come to see me. When did we see you sick and in prison? When did we see you hungry and didn't feed you? Because there was a Christian little girl in church. There was a Christian sister who was in me that you were selfish toward. And because you were selfish toward those, the least of these, my little ones, you don't have any part in my life. Separate yourself. We can't live in the same world. Because I am benevolence. I, God, am benevolence. Abraham, when he went up to Mount Moriah, he called him Jehovah Jireh. The God of benevolence will provide. Glory to God. Where do you stand today in your Christian faith? Do you need to arise out of the slump of selfishness and 
and self-centeredness, narcissism, say, Jesus, all that I have is yours. And all that I ever hope to be is yours. Take me, use me, let me be effective for your kingdom. Let me show somebody your love. Jesus told his disciples, they will know you are my disciples because you have been benevolent to each other. <coughs> you love each other. God bless you as you contemplate this. As you do your own evaluation. In Jesus' name. Consequences of selfishness. We all need to do a little inventory every now and then. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our invitational hymn in our hymnal number 591. Jesus, you were selfless. Thank you. You unselfishly went to the cross of Calvary. You unselfishly left the kingdom of heaven. The Bible says that you did not think it robbery mm. to give up your glory. Thank you. But you unselfishly came in obedience to your Father that we can stand here today and ask you to have your own way in our lives. 
Lord, I pray that this is the prayer of every heart here today. That you would have your own way in our lives. God, I ask you now in the name of Jesus that as we bow before you, Lord God, where there is selfishness, Lord, I ask you to remove it in the name of Jesus. So that we can be a united body in Christ. So that we can walk in the same direction of benevolence, in the love of God. So that we may touch each other as brothers and sisters, manifesting your love one to another. Guide our hearts now as we leave them in your care with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Just grab your hymn books and turn to hymn number 337, Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. Hymn number 337, Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus.
took bread and he broke it and he gave thanks. Let us pray. Eternal God and our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that when we go to the back of the cross, we can see your brokenness, your broken body. As they lashed you with the whip, the veil of your temple was rented so that we might enter, so that we might have access to the throne of grace. Jesus, your blood ran down so we may have the atonement for our sins. So Lord, as you gave thanks for your brokenness, how much more should we? We thank you, Lord Jesus, thank you. for your unselfishness. We thank you for your willingness to go to the cross. <laughs> 
so that we might be redeemed. We thank you, Lord, and we say amen. Eat ye all of it. In the same manner, also, he took the cup. Lord our God, we praise your holy name. Lord God, that from the blood that flowed from your side, the verdict has been given that we are not guilty, that the sin penalty has been removed, and Lord, replaces your righteousness. Oh Lord, let us be mindful of all that you have blessed us with, that we have entered in to God's favor, and that we may have now the positive righteousness Lord, to do your will. Oh, Lord, I pray that all hearts rejoice for this wonderful faith, that we may go with it with new vigor, with new energy, and run for your will and your power. <coughs> Lord, spreading your good news to all that we come in contact with. Lord, thank you for the covering that now we have life. In Jesus' name we pray. Drink ye all of it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom the power and, and the glory, forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. At this time we'll take the benevolence offering. Remember when you give the benevolence offering, you are sharing the love of God. Because you are sharing God. Because God is benevolence. So at this time the ushers will come and they will take the offering. sovereign Lord. Lord, we thank you for giving us a life where we can be benevolent. Lord, that we can give out your love each and every day. And Lord, we know that the blessings come from heaven. Lord, thank you for opening up the windows of heaven and showering down a blessing. And thank you for giving your mandate of love. Lord, bless these humble gifts and give them to the furtherance of your kingdom here at Global Evangelistic Ministry. Lord, bless each and every one who gave and all those who wanted to give. 
And Lord, give us again in our hearts the example to give benevolent. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Please grab your hymn books. Turn to hymn number 157. The love of God. Hymn number 157. The love of God. you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and the Lord give you peace now, henceforth and forevermore. Amen. 